Hello everyone, this is Manish. This video is all about creating the your first mental stand task sequence using the SACM. I am going to cover the terminologies used for the OST basics and then I will be also showing you that what are the prerequisites means that and the recipe means at very minimum what things you require to create the task sequence and then I will be creating downloading the ISO from the Visual Studio subscription. Then we will be creating an operating system image package then I will be creating the task sequence and it will be giving you the live demo. I will be covering each and every step of the task sequence that what exactly it means so that you can have a better understanding. Let's start. The topic I'm going to cover is OSG basics create Windows 10 task sequence using SCCM. This is going to be your first task sequence. If you don't have any knowledge, this video is going to help you. Okay, so let's understand about the terminologies used for the operating system deployment. First, I will start with the OS image. So just remember one thing, whenever I am talking about the OS image, means I am talking about the image file, install.vim. So what is install.vim? This install.vim is a complete operating system compressed into a vim file. You can treat it like a zip file. Zip file. So Microsoft, when they release their Windows 10 ISO, they, they, when they release their new version, they provide the ISO. So when we open the ISO, under sources folder, they will be install.vim. So that install.vim consists of your C, Windows directories, program files, program files x86, INF folder, system32, everything what is there on the OS. So it's a vanilla OS in form of a single file install.vim. So that's why it's a very important file. Second is about OS upgrade package. OS upgrade package is nothing but the whole content of the ISO file. I always used to see if there is a confusion between the people that uh, what is the difference between the OS image and OS update package? OS image at one end is just a single WIM file, while OS update package is complete source of the ISO, which through which you can do the complete installation using. You can copy the whole content into the USB. You can make a bootable USB, and you can install your OS using OS update package. But majorly, we focus only upon the OS image. That's what I'm going to cover. I'm not going to focus upon more more upon was a pre package which is used for specific case only. Third thing is about the boot image. Again, when I am talking image, it's a WIM file. So what is boot image? Boot image is Windows pre-installation environment. I can also say Windows PE or Win PE. Treat boot image like a mini OS, mini operating system. The only purpose of boot image is to start. For example, you have, you to boot your device, you need uh, some kind of thing to launch to initiate the installation so boot image launches a WinP environment contacts the SCCM server and finally gets the policy so that you can see the task sequence once the task sequence is initiated uh, and during that next restart it will simply go and boot image will not be required so treat boot image like a launcher to launch a rocket we say a rocket launcher right so to launch the task sequence installation of OS image we need to have a boot image Next term comes is boot media. Again, it's a confusing topic between boot image and boot media for newcomers. Boot image, boot image is a WIM file which I told you. But how that boot image is going to load? If you you have a bare metal device, bare metal means a device without any OS, that WIM file will not directly go and load. You need to have a binary. You need to have a kind of a mechanism. So that means you need to have a boot files. So this boot media. Is an ISO which can be created through the SCCM create task sequence media is an option so this boot media is an ISO file which consists of not only boot image but all bootable files required so once you have a boot media in ISO file or virtual machine you can mount and boot your device and the same boot media ISO content if you copy it into the USB by making it bootable then you can boot your device, your Windows 10, your you know bare metal device can boot using boot media. So eventually boot media is launching the boot image. Once boot image is launched, then you will be seeing the list of task sequence and then you will initiate the task, the task sequence. Next thing is Pixie boot. What is Pixie boot? It's a pre-boot execution environment. So I would say boot media and Pixie boot are pretty much the similar thing means the end result is similar. The purpose of boot media is to launch the boot image. Same is the purpose of Pixie boot. But Pixie boot comes with an advantage. 
For Pixie Boot, it's like a one-time configuration which requires WVS and WDSCP configuration. Once that configuration is there, things are working fine. You can simply press F12 and the boot image will be loaded from the WDS server, means through network boot. So there won't be any need to have the multiple USBs in your environment. If you are going to build hundreds of devices at the same time, you have to use the USB on every device. But with Pixie Boot, you just plug and play with the network cable, press F12 on all, all devices, boot image will load, load, right? But for this video, for the demonstration purpose, I will be making the things easy. We will be focusing on the boot media because we are just loading boot image. That's it. Next comes about the WDS. WDS is Windows Deployment Services. To enable the Pixie, we need to have WDS service installed. This is this is not a topic I'm going to cover, but it's a very important to important thing to understand about the WDS. Next comes the final thing is drivers and driver packages. When we are installing an OS, what is the purpose of installing OS if that uh, that hardware model, specific hardware model, doesn't have the drivers installed? So with the task sequence, what we need to have is to install the OS and to install the driver for that specific model. So having a driver or driver package and driver package under the system console is also a very important thing. Okay, I covered the basic topics. Now I'm talking about the prerequisites for the operating system deployment. Few of them are mandatory and few of them are optional. Let's see first about the mandatory thing. The very first thing is OS image. I told you, I explained you about the OS image. It's the installed option, the vanilla image which comes from the Microsoft, right? So we can customize also, but I'm, I'm going to focus upon more upon the vanilla image. That is the most preferred method nowadays. Second important thing required is boot image. I explained you about previously, previous slide, that what exactly is the boot image. See, the boot image needs to have two kind of things that the boot image should be able to boot the device and it should have two kind of drivers. One is network drivers so that it can get the IP address and one is, another thing is mass storage driver so that the boot image is able to detect the hard disk. For example, if boot image is loaded and if it is not able to detect the hard disk, how task sequence is going to work? It doesn't have any, it is not able to detect the hard disk so it will fail. Eventually it will fail. So boot image should you should be able to detect those things. Usually Microsoft used to take care of this thing with every new version of ADK, they provide a new boot image and that boot image has the capability of having more and more drivers. They used to contact the vendors and the drivers are there. But in case if you are facing the issue related to missing IP address or uh, not able to see the disk using disk part, it means you, this is the time to customize. You modify your boot image and inject the drivers. Boot media. This is also the third, the, the important component because we need to boot the device. We can use either boot media or Pixie, I told you, right? So in this demo, what I'm going to show you, I'm going to use the boot media. I will be showing you how to create the task sequence media to create the boot media. Pixie, pre-boot execution environment to load a boot image. Either boot media or Pixie, I will not be focusing upon the Pixie. Next thing is driver and driver package. I'm using on the virtual machine. so. I won't be using the driver driver package, but in the real environment, driver package is mandatory. And finally, the configuration manager package. This is the most important thing for the SSM task sequence because it is not just installing the SSM client package, it is actually transitioning your device from WinPE to full OS. So it's a very important step, and you can't avoid that. If you think that you don't need the SSM client package, no. It won't happen. The task sequence will fail. And the optional components, obviously, you can go with the applications, package, software upgrade, etc. For my demo, I'm going to keep the things pretty much very simple. What I will be using it: OS image, boot image, boot media, SSM package, and optional components. Maybe I can use one or two applications, right? So the good thing is, as part of the complete SSM installation, once the system is healthy, up and running boot image and SSM package is already there. I will be showing you momentarily. So we are only focus is about having an OS image and creating a boot media. And also obviously we have to create a task sequence as well, right? So in my demo, I'm going to show you that how to download the Windows 10 ISO from Visual Studio subscription. But if you have, if you have an ISO, you are good to go. Second thing is, from that ISO, I'm going to extract the ISO that install.vim 
and will be creating an operating system image package on SS console. Then I'm going to also create a Windows 10 task sequence. Then going through each and every step, what does it mean? Then I'm also going to create the boot media to boot the device. And finally, giving you a demo of how I booted and how the task sequence is running. Let's begin. I have logged on to my Visual Studio subscription. So when I go to the downloads under Windows 10, I am looking for the Windows 10 Business Edition. So I'm going to download the version 22H2, January 2023. That is the latest version. If I click on download, I have two languages to select. I can go with either of them. I just need to click to download it. I have downloaded my ISO. This is the name. So let me first mount it. So once I mount it, it has mounted on a virtual drive that is called F drive. So the whole content, I have to go to the sources and I'm searching for the install.vim. So you can see it's somewhere around 4.9 GB of size. So this is the Vim file, which is the most important thing, which I need to copy to the SCCM source to create operating system image package. So this image file 4.9 GB, it's showing a 4.9 GB, but when, when I export it, when I'm going to create operating system image package, if I see the property, the size will be somewhere around 14 to 15 GB because I told you it's a zip format. It's like it is kind of a zip format. Everything compressed into a single file. So let me launch the SCCM server. I have logged on to the SCCM server and I have copied the install.vim to this source location. So I have install.vim available over here. What I need to do is let me just make some sensible name. Demo win 10 22H2. So I just need to remember this location because I'm now going to create the operating system image package. So for that, you need to launch the system console, go to operating system and operating system image. So you can see in under operating system, this showing a, this is showing as operating system images and this is showing as operating system update packages. So if you wanted to add image Vim file, one single file, you have to add it over here. But if you have, if you have to add the complete source of the ISO, this is the place you have to go upgrade packages. So I'm looking for the image file. This is what I will be focusing upon. Right click, add operating system image. Provide the path for the WIM file. You have to exactly select the correct WIM file. Click on this option and I have an option to extract. So this is a multi-edition ISO. So it has all the operating system versions available. So if you, you can have a look that I can go with Windows 10 Education, Enterprise Pro, Education, everything, right? So I can have an option to select any index file. So I will be selecting that option. I don't want to extract, but I would say in the real production environment, you need to extract, you need to have just one single index file just for the simplicity purpose. But here I'm not extracting it because it will mount and just it will simply take some more time. So let me just not select this option. I'm unchecking this box. Next, click on next during the pre-cache settings. Next, oh, okay, let me just provide some good name, demo Windows 10 Enterprise. So this is the name of the operating system image package. Click next, next, and done. So my operating system image package has been imported over here. What next? I have to distribute onto the distribution point. Select the DP. And done. Okay. Operating system image is there. Let me verify the boot image. By default, SCCM, once the SCCM installation and everything is ready, you will be able to see two boot image, 64 bit and 32 bit. So my boot image x64, x86 already exists. I'm going to use the first one, right? So I'm not doing anything for the boot, boot image, right? Now what I have to do, the two important things, I have to create the task sequence and I have to create the boot media. Both the options can be done from here. See, if I go to the task sequence, right click, I have option to create task sequence. This is what I'm going to create to create the Windows 10 22H2 task sequence. Second option I have create task sequence media. So task sequence media is nothing but to create a media, the ISO file. So I'm going to create the boot media with that. So I'm going to show you both. 
But before that, let me show you the operating system image, right, which I just imported over here. So if I go right click, check the property. Let's verify a few things. Click on images. This is the OS version and everything is mentioned over here. So you can see, even though the size was showing very 4.9 GB, but the actual size here is showing as 14.7 GB. So it means it is giving me an indication that what exactly is the real file size when I extract it, right? Just something important to just make a note of it. Now let's create the Windows 10 task sequence. Right click, select create task sequence. Okay, so I can I can see there are a lot of options. So I'm just going to focus upon the first one, install an existing image package. So if I have to deploy a Vim file, so first option is the option for me. Provide the name. Let me make it demo Win 10 22H2. And you can see I have to select the boot image because task sequence won't work if I'm not going to specify a boot image, right? So boot image has to be is a mandatory thing. I'm selecting the boot image, click on OK, click next. Okay, uh, let me go on previous. I would like to go with the run as high performance power plan so that you know it can be using the utilizing the most resources and can be used with the high power plan. So the process will be much more faster and efficient. Now I am coming to the install Windows operating system page, right? So here I have to select the Vim file which is which already imported. I am selecting that image. Image index. So this is what I was telling you that I have option to select any image. I would like to go with the enterprise edition. Now you can see over here that it will automatically do the partition formatting. So this option is okay. But I don't want to go with this option because it's a Hyper-V machine, that virtual machine. I just don't want it to focus upon the BitLogger thing, right? And here is about the local user account. By default, it is showing us that the local account for that Windows 10 device will be in a disabled state and it will be randomly generating a password. But just for the sake of, if in case task sequence fails, I will be able to log on if I am selecting this option, right? So let me just enable this and provide some password over here. Click on next. Now this is for the configuration setting. I can join it to the work group or domain. Let me join to the domain. I'm selecting the domain first. Done. Now I'm selecting the domain OU. I want this device to go to a specific OU. I see a lot of time uh, guys used to make a mistake by selecting the computer. This computer is a container. This is not the OU. If you provide this option, task sequence will eventually fail. So better to select any OU. So I'm selecting the client OU. So how can I say it's a container? Because showing me a raw folder only. OU will be having a folder and there will be subfolder means you can see I have a look over here. So it, will, it is giving me an indication that it, it is an OU. So this is not sufficient just to provide a domain or domain OU. I need to have an account which should be having a permission to join the domain and to move the device to a correct OU. So I'm going to use my global administrator account, but you need to make sure that you have a correct, correct account which approved permissions. So let me select the account which will be used for domain joining. I need to click on verify just in case I want to test the connection whether it is working fine or not. Click on test connection. Here you go. The connection was successfully verified. Things are looking pretty much good. Click on OK. Click next. Now it has automatically selected the system client package. So you can go and select any package you want. But yeah, I'm just going with the default option. I can provide the installation properties, for example, see here, CCM cache size and other things. I'm going with the default thing. No changes. State migration. This is for the USMT, right? So I just don't want it to go to use the USMT for data migration from the old device to the new one or just any other thing. So let me just disable. I would just want to make it very simple. I'm also disabling the capture network settings and capture Microsoft Windows settings because I'm not going to deploy it to existing OS. I'm making things pretty much very simple for a bare metal device. Click next. Install updates. 
I don't want to install the updates during the task sequence. Click next. Install applications. I can go with next and can finish it. Just for the purpose of demonstration, let me select few applications. I'm selecting 7-zip Chrome. Click OK. That's it. This is just for a demo purpose. So I could have skipped this thing also. Click next. Next. Done. My task sequence is created. Let me just have a look what exactly is there in the task sequence. Right click the task sequence and click on edit. Here I can see there are two groups created install operating system and setup operating system. Right. So anything after this is like a full OS. Before that, everything is in WinPE means system booted into Windows PE. It, it loaded the boot image. You can see the boot image assigned to the task sequence will be loaded. Then it will format the disk either using BIOS or UEFI. There are two steps. Why two steps? There are different, different conditions. Condition got created automatically. See such an awesome work. Everything has been done over here because if it is not UEFI, it will be going to format using the BIOS setting, right? This is a setting and if it is the UEFI, which should be the case nowadays, every every device comes with the UEFI. So this is for the legacy support. So UEFI, so majorly the setting is going to apply. So you can see the make this, boot this, this type is GPT and all kind of things are already there. So you can make changes, but I'm not recommending making any changes for this purpose. Next is apply operating system image. This is the step which actually installs the OS, applies the OS. You can see image package has been installed. Image index is also there. Here for the customization purpose, I can use the unattended.xml file. Unattended.xml file is a, a answer file which can provide so many customization. For example, that what are the settings for the image means I don't want you to cover this over here, but just for example, the wireless LAN, there will be few pop-ups will be coming for the language settings. There are a lot of things which can be done, the OSG computer name customization, so many things. So just for the sake of simplicity, I'm not going with that. In next video, I can cover that if you want, if you're interested. Now, next is apply window setting. This is the same page when we created a task second for asking about creating the password. So I provide the password. And it is also providing the option me option for providing a default time zone and language. <clears throat> Same way, apply network settings where it was asking about the domain joint step. Everything is over here. And finally, there is a apply device drivers. So it's a virtual machine. I do just don't want to have this step. Even though in production, you need to have a complete step of uh, creating a driver package, which I have not covered over here. I just because it's more for the virtual machine and things will pretty much work fine. So I just wanted to disable this step, disable this step. That's it. This is done. So till this phase, we are in, into win, win PE. Then the step will come set up windows and configuration manager. When this step, step runs, you are still in, in windows PE because everything what you see previously is going to apply in a symmetrical format. And then finally the setup and windows configuration manager will come. This step, will actually take you from WinPE to full OS. It is not only just installing the OS, it is not only just installing the SM client, but taking you from WinPE to full OS. And after that, you are in full OS. So what I would like to do is, let me show you. I can add so many steps over here. I have general, I can add the command line step, PowerShell script, domain join, connect to network, so many things, restart computer. So let me just add restart computer. So when I'm adding restart computer, it's asking that it's showing me that by default, it will go to the, it will, after restart, boot image will, is going to launch. So that doesn't make any sense because we are in full OS. So I just wanted to go with the currently installed default operating system image. So why restart computer step is required. For example, any application which requires restart, I, after that application installation, I need to have a restart. So restart sometimes makes a lot of sense. So this is how we can make the things. Also, I can make multiple groups. If I go click over here, add new group, for example, I can make this group laptop and can add applications related to laptop for desktop, virtual machine. So I can create multiple groups and how it is going to install on laptop. Then I have to provide a condition. 
condition based upon task sequence variable you know wmi query registry settings so not going to cover just don't want to make it very complex make it very simple so this is our simplest task sequence which has been created let me click on apply okay now i need to deploy this task sequence to all unknown computers right click deploy select the collection all unknown computers click on ok click next okay i just wanted to make it available if i am selecting required every device when it is uh, trying to do we are using boot media it will forcefully install it so i just don't want to select that option click on available and make it available for whom configuration manager client media pixie or what so i just want that this task sequence should be present only to if someone is using a boot media or pixie making making things simple when when do i want to make it available let me select the current time Use user experience show task sequence progress yes obviously it makes sense i won't be making any other changes that's it download content locally when you by the task sequence all good next next done the task sequence is created we understood about the step but we won't we are not in a position to run the task sequence because we don't have boot media so let's create the boot media now right click the task sequence create boot media create task sequence media we have multiple options standalone boot media capture media prestige media but for our purpose we only require bootable media click next <coughs> dynamic media or site based media so if you have multiple primary sites you can have boot bootable media for each site or you can go with the dynamic media by selecting all the primary sites so by default let me go with the dynamic media i have to select the path for my boot media where i would like to create it so i'm going to select the boot media path the iso file name click next i can protect this boot media using a password so that if someone like get the access they are not able to run the task sequence they have to provide the password so let me just disable this option and this is the certificate this boot media will be valid for one year i can change the option as per my own need now i have to select the boot media boot image I, i we have to make sure that we are using the same boot image which is used in the task sequence because if there, if there is a mismatch the task sequence will fail so to create the boot media it requires to copy the content from distribution point so i am selecting a distribution point now management point boot media needs to contact the ssm server management point to get the policies so here i am selecting the management point click next i am not going to make any customization for the boot media next next done boot media has been created so i need to copy this boot media to my personal device so that i can use it for my virtual machine if you wanted to use for the for the hardware means the physical hardware means laptop or desktop you need to extract the iso content and have to make a bootable iso the refuse is an application the easiest application through which you can simply go and create a bootable usb with the iso directly this is my virtual machine and i would like to mount the dvd first so i the boot media which i have copied locally so this is the boot media which i have created so this is the iso file i am ready now let me click on start and i will be pressing f12 continuously so that i can boot it from the cd or dvd press any key to boot from cd or dvd so now the boot image is loading so boot media is able to do the job it was a bootable one and finally the boot image has been loaded and now task sequence wizard has come when i click next it is going to contact the ssm server so if everything is working fine means i am able to see the ip address if i am able to see the list of this everything will work fine just for a demonstration purpose let me show you 
I am pressing F8 to open the command prompt. If I type IP config, yes, I am getting IP, all good. Let me type this part. I just wanted to see whether the disk is there or not. So I typed this part and now writing list disk. So I can see this 0, 128 GB of size is available. Everything looks okay to me. Click on exit. I just wanted to come out of the command prompt. Click next. Here I can see list of task sequence. Let me select the first one which I created demo win 10 22h2. My task sequence has been initiated. It is formatting the partition disk using UEFI because it is a generation 2 device. Now the step apply operating system image is coming. If I wanted to check the progress, I can show you. I can still uh, I can again open the command prompt and can look into the log file. So the location of the log file at this step will be x windows temp sms ts log. Let me show you. CM trace is an application to view the log files very easily. And here you can see the task sequence that the log file smsts.log is capturing everything related to a task sequence. It's downloading from specific DP from which location. And every step will be captured in, in the log file. The location of the log file will keep on changing based upon the, upon the step. When it is in full OS, it will be a different location. But when it when it is in WinP right now, it will be the, this will be the location. X Windows Temp SMS TS log. Let me just close it now. Downloading is completed. Now it is applying the image. I can again have a look into the log file. Okay, I can see starting to apply image 3 from demo win 10 22h2.vim to C drive. So the whole content, everything from the vim file is now being extracted and copying to the C drive now. Now the step setup windows and configuration manager is running. So it is still in Windows PE. Now the restart is going to happen. After that, the system will come out of the WinP and go to full OS, then the actual setup windows and configuration manager installation, that system client installation will happen. Now the restart is going to happen. Let me click on restart now, or else it, it would automatically do a restart. Now you can see it is showing us getting things ready. So what actually it is happening is that previously apply, apply operating system image, apply window setting, network settings, everything combined together, it added to the answer file and then it is applying those settings at this moment so the whole c drive that full os will now get ready if, if i would have selected the driver driver package then it would be applying during this stage means everything will be getting ready for the full os during this phase now the setup windows and configuration manager ssm client is getting installed now i am into full os and how i can confirm that i am into full os if i open the f8 if I press the F8 to open the command prompt, if I uh, if I try to open the device manager, uh, I have to type devmgmt.msc to open the device manager. And you can see I'm able to open the device manager. If I was into WinPE, I wasn't I wasn't able to see the device manager. So it's an indication that I'm into the full OS now. Now I am at final step where it is installing the application. So that you can see installing one of two applications as I specified two applications, 7-zip and Chrome. As you can see, it's showing me as a, let's connect you to a network. So it's giving me an option that where you want to connect. This is not a good ex user experience. Why it is coming? Because I did not provide any uh, answer file. I did not provide any unattended.xml. So I just kept the things very simple. But just want, I just wanted to skip my task sequence is, all, is almost done. So I just click need to click on I don't have internet. Actually, my task sequence is completed. I just need to get rid of these options. Continue with limited setup. That's it. So what exactly is happening? By default, Windows 10 will ask about these questions, how you want to connect to the network. So unattended.xml, if it contains the answers that this is the setting, these are the things you have to specify, we can get rid of that. 
and finally I can see I am on the login page and the device is already joined to the domain sign into manban so if the moment I provide username and password I will be able to log in with the application full complete OS install and the application I hope this video was informative and would have cleared the doubt if you uh, were struggling to uh, work on the task sequence related issues right so just let me know if you like the video so that I can provide more videos more advanced videos as per your need thank you so much